Hey guys, today we are going to talk about legacy and modern. The fact that we are getting more GPs is very important. The 2018 GP list came out. I will be in Houston and Dallas, and maybe the one in California, depending on my schedule. So I definitely will see you in Houston, which is the beginning of January. I do have a lot of stuff I want to offload, uh, mainly my extra stuff I no longer need. But uh, in 2018, the big news here is Modern and Legacy are back with a vengeance. So Modern has 12 individual events. It has three unified Modern events and four trio events, which Modern will be one of the decks. So that is a total of 19 different GPs that Modern will be played at. That is a lot as a percentage and as a number. That means Modern cards, barring the... Reprints, of course, reprints are always unpredictable unless you are a large store and know beforehand. These prices of modern should be the lowest they are. I don't expect them to be lower than they're tomorrow than they are today, given the schedule it is heavily favored in modern. Now, legacy is even more insane because legacy went from very few GPs to quite a bit. So you have four individual ones and then you have three are four trio ones. So you have eight legacy events next year. That is crazy lot. That is a lot of legacy events or GPs that legacy will be featured in. Now, what cards will spike there? Legacy is a little different modern. Modern, you never know what's going to be reprinted. But in legacy, you know, reserve list cards are not. So you already see all the dual lands just spike up. You already see all the reserve list cards slowly, but reliably tick up in price now the non-reserve list cards it's kind of uh you have too many things coming out you have iconic masters you have 25th anniversary masters and who knows what else masters we're going to get and you also have eternal master boxes for around 200 still everywhere but uh houston is late january which is nice it's always the same place I don't know if there's an anime convention going on then, but last time there was an anime convention, so it was kind of like two birds with one stone. Uh, it was really nice to go to both of them at the same time. I am probably going to offload all my extra shock lands, fetch lands. Uh, at this point in time, my prediction is they will have gone up because modern is scheduled heavily. Maybe like after the event, It'll go up, but I just want to kind of get rid of them. Uh, so that would be kind of nice. And I typically don't play at the event. I will normally do a side event or a few different side events because they're more fun to me and they're better experience than doing the main event. Plus, in Limited, I'm just not very good at Limited. Uh, and it's not something that I have a lot of practice with. So Houston, that's going to be a ton of fun. Memphis, I might go to Memphis. That's an interesting one. But regardless, a lot of modern cards will go up in price. A lot of standard cards will be like met. And then a lot of legacy cards, especially those on the reserve list, it is kind of, it's time to buy. If you want to make a move on it, I do not imagine legacy reserve list cards will be cheaper today than they are tomorrow. And this all leads up to this kind of, hmm, the Star City Games, no. Hmm, the Channel Fireball, no. And this is pretty big news. Eight GPs with legacy in it. If you knew that, yeah, he would be he would be buying up these uh, dual lands at three hundred dollars a piece because legacy and modern are back. They are back. There's no other way to say it. You got one of them at nineteen, and you have the other one at eight. That's a lot of GPs. Maybe they're not. And then Pro Tour legacy is back on the Pro Tour as well. All very, very interesting stuff. So Kyoto, it's kind of nice. Uh, then you got Seattle with the Legacy and Standard event. Modern it would be in the Connecticut. They're just a very good mix of events. I think they did a fantastic job. Maybe they realized that the most popular formats are Modern and Legacy. They tend to be older. They tend to be buy your deck and you're fine and you don't really need to i mean outside the banning and modern right so if they ban death shadow most of the players would be kind of screwed just like they ban twin or uh, what's that go gary grave troll and the dredge players are kind of screwed it's possible but the, 
interesting part about Death Shadow is they did try to take it out. They tried to take out Gitaxin Probe, and that was supposedly going to slow down this deck. Because Gitaxin Probe is absolutely what you want to do on turn one. You want to lose two life, look at your opponent's hand, make decisions. Oh, do they have creature removal? Do they have paths? Maybe they don't have paths. What do I need? And then draw you an extra card and then fill up your graveyard somewhat. So that is the ideal card, and they banned it, and it still survived. In fact, it got stronger because they replaced, I don't know if it got stronger. It just got a little more utility and that people played a lot more Doxies in replacement of Gitaxian Probe, which also loses two life, but and you get to look at your opponent's hand. You don't get a card for yourself, but you do get to take a card away. So it's a very fair exchange. I like the list. I think it's interesting. And especially for legacy reserve list cards, they're not going to be cheaper tomorrow than they are today. It's just not happening anymore. Uh, it is what it is. Legacy, I mean, you're going to have a mana base of $2,000 for black, blue. And if you splash some white tundras, you're looking at a three thousand dollar plus mana base uh, just to just for those cards. Uh, that's kind of it's a shame in my opinion, but uh, it is good for those legacy players. And I'm glad that Wizard Coast has has done this. I've been highly critical of legacy, uh, mainly because of the price point and how I not not everyone can afford it. But I am glad to see it back on the. Pro Tour, I am glad to see it in force on the GPs because I think you're you are attracting an audience that needs to be attracted, that needs attention, um, like and in a good way. I'm not saying that they are you know babies or whatever. I'm saying that Wizard of the Coast has not shown them attention for some time, but that is a core demographic of your player base, a very dedicated, very. Uh, motivated demographic and it's nice to show them appreciation sometimes right anyway in modern modern I'm, I'm surprised that there's so many modern events uh, to be quite frank i expected a lot of standard events and very few eternal events but this is it's great uh, but that also means right now pick up your modern cards as well uh, you always have the, the legacy is more legacy there's less risk because you can just pick up reserve list cards and dual lands and you'll be fine but in modern, everything can be reprinted. But the stuff that's not reprinted, watch out for those prices. Because with this schedule, modern is highlighted quite a bit. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.